we'll just start and then we'll pray. How about that? Glory to God. So, a plug is a very powerful thing. A plug gives you access, doesn't it? I mean, if you don't have a plug and your battery dies on your phone, what does that mean? That's bad. That's not good, is it? You're stranded somewhere and your battery's not working and you don't have a plug. So a plug enables you to plug in, right, to a power source, electricity, and that's how your battery recharges. So everything's good again, or your toaster, or whatever it is, your, your electric blanket, whatever it is you're plugging into. But plugs give us access to a lot more than just electricity. What is on the other side of your phone? Not literally, if you flip it over, you just might see the apple on the back of your phone. But when you plug into that wall and plug your phone in and you charge your battery, you have access to a whole world out there, don't you? You have access to the internet, right? You have access to Facebook, all kinds of social media, Instagram, lots of wonderful things that you can access. Or when you plug your TV in, you're not just plugging in to the electrical unit, you're actually plugging in to all of those TV stations, you plug your radio in, you're plugging in to whatever radio station is that you're listening to that day. You're playing a video game, you plug in your power cord, your video game comes up, and you're plugged in, not just to the electricity, you're plugged in to what? You're plugged in to the source that's coming into your house. It's coming not just into your home, in your eyes and in your ear gates, coming into your heart too, right? It's impacting you. That's why we love technology, right? We love media. We love the impact of being able to Google whatever we need and find an answer in a real short time frame. Maybe you're doing something like you're trying to cook something and you need a, a recipe and you can't remember how long you're supposed to boil hard you know, eggs, something really simple. You can just Google it and you get that answer. But we know that when we plug into social media, we plug into a lot of stuff that is undesirable. Some of it's good. And sometimes the good is just too much of the good, right? It's just too much. So today is February 1st. In case, in case you missed that, we turned the calendar over into a new month. And in February, here at Victory, in this house, something very special happens. Who knows? It's the month of unplugged. February is our annual unplugged month. In the month of February every year, as a house, we individually make decisions regarding plugging or unplugging our lives from whatever it is that we feel is distracting us, perhaps, or a, or a few other things that we're going to talk about tonight. And we do this every year, and so tonight we're going to talk about reasons why you might consider unplugging for the month of February and joining us. And, and we'll look at some reasons why you might not want to unplug. There might be some reasons there that Pastor Tina and Pastor Ian both referred to in their opening. And, you know, Holy Spirit is so good. He's, he's connecting us all the time. And I, you know, love words, as, as so many of us do. So I looked up the word unplugged. And, you know, no surprise... I found a word that says to disconnect. That's kind of logical, isn't it, right? When you unplug, you disconnect. But what I wasn't ready for was the significance of the words that are synonyms to unplug, words that mean almost the same thing. And I, when I was looking at them, I really experienced the weight of them in the spirit. Words that are synonymous with unplugged are the words clear, C-L-E-A-R, to clear when you unplug, to free, to unclog and to open, to unclog and to open. Now, words have power, right? They carry meaning, and there's some weight in the spirit realm in these words tonight and in this month, because God has been pointing to this time on the calendar where he wants us to take care of some business. He's inviting us into this really special time, this wonderful time with him, this sacred time, really a holy time where we get to make a decision to do something 
to address some of these issues that perhaps have come up in our lives. These are powerful words. God wants us to unplug because he desires to clear some things up this month. He wants to unclog some things that have become clogged. He wants to disentangle some things that have become tangled and confused, perhaps. So many good things. Another great thing he wants to do is unjam some things that are jammed. Perhaps you've got some areas of your life that are just clogged up, jammed up, not working. Maybe your business testimony isn't that you have more contracts this month than you did the previous year. Maybe that's not your testimony. Maybe some things are jammed up and God wants to unjam those things, if you will. He wants you to unplug so that he can begin to show you what is clogging your pipeline. Because God is in the blessing business. You know, the fountain is on, it's a gold faucet, and it's in a continual flow. That's God's promise to us. He's not holding back. So if we're not experiencing the great outpouring that he's already provided for us, this great harvest in 2017, he's giving us opportunity early in the year to take care of some things. He wants us to do some business in this month and everyone here says, amen. amen. I'm excited about that. So I'm really excited about that. I mean, I, we have Pastor Alex's testimony from just a, a couple weeks ago. He, he mentioned how he was so surprised when he actually took up this challenge. He didn't really anticipate the kind of freedom that he would exper experience from doing it. And when he did participate and engage, he was really surprised to see how much of himself had been entangled in what's on the other side of the plug, right? And how much that was impacting and affecting him. And by unplugging was enabling him to connect to God in a greater way. Yay God to that. So we're excited. We're excited. And I know that I, I need this season. I don't know about you, but I, I'm really excited. I'm excited. I've had my own testimony, too, of having unplugged and experiencing a revelation that I didn't realize how connected I was to what's on the other side of that electrical current, whatever it is, however that works. I'm looking at Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize how much I was being impacted by the things that I was seeing, right? The things that I was reading or listening to comparing myself to other people's lives, you know, seeing my life as so much less than what I'm seeing through social media and other mediums. Yay, so, so we're so excited. So let's just jump in to some reasons why you might unplug. Reasons why you might want to do this. You might want to unplug because you do know that you're distracted. Right. You're having a hard time focusing. You just can't seem to get this brain to settle down and to focus like it used to. Right. We know that research is already showing us that all of this data and input is affecting us. Literally, there's so much stimulation going on, we're having a hard time focusing like we used to on one thing. And we're finding out that being a multitasker is actually not a very great thing that actually we're being called back to the day where you would just focus on one thing at a time and go deep in that one thing, ex you know, other than skimming the surface on a bunch of things. So maybe you're finding there's just some temptations out there that you've been exposed to that you know you need to come to a stop, a full stop on those temptations. It could be something really intense, like maybe you've become exposed to pornography, for example, and it's got a grip on you. You don't know how it happened, no condemnation, but guess what? God is saying, you can nip it in the bud, but you have to make a decision to do that. And we're here to stand with you in that process. But, you know, maybe it's a something that might seem as simple as just looking at um, Instagram and you're, you're following a bunch of people that love to decorate and you're looking at all these decorating pages. You know, I know for me, that's like poison in my system because, you know, what happens to me? I start feeling like I got to move. Like I don't like my house no more. 
You know, like it's time to renovate. I need to rip that wall out or I just am so unhappy. You know, and what happens is I feel like just get me out of housing project. I need to do something. I want to, I need to make a change. But, you know, a change is not a bad thing and renovating your house is not a bad thing. But if the motivation for doing it comes out of a place of discontent or where you're comparing yourself to other people, then you know God is not in that. That is a distraction, even though it looks like a good thing. It's not God. It's not God. He has a plan for our lives. He has a season and a time for everything. And when we get out of that season in time, we're messing with our mojo, okay? We're messing with the plan of God, and it's not going to be good for us. So maybe you've just got to step away because you're finding that you're just competing and comparing all over the place because you're following all your friends as you scroll through Facebook and you're just looking at their lives, the highlight reel of everything going good in their lives and feeling like your life stinks in comparison. You know, when you feel discontented and say, you know, God, what have you done for me lately? God forbid. But you know, what have you done for me lately, God? He knows that that's our, 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 not our propensity, but it is, a, it is a possibility, let's just say, that we can do that. And we know in the Old Testament that he instructed his people to, to create holidays and monuments, right, to remember all the good things that he's done because he knows that we can easily forget. But we're going to take this month, you know, could this be you that you want to take this month to unplug because of these distractions in your life or these temptations in your life or this com competition and comparison in your life? Or another reason to uh, unplug is because you just need to create some space. You know, like you're, you're, you're just so full. You know, I, I would say, people say, like, are you, how are you doing? Instead of saying, oh, I'm busy. I know that's a bad word, right? So I say, oh, my life's just full. So much good stuff. It's full, which is really AKA for like I'm drowning, okay? <laughs> I've got like so much good stuff going on that I can't even get my head above the surface, right? It's all good. It's all good. Not really. Not really. I don't have any space in my life. And then that creates stress, anxiety, right? For some people, it just makes you want to quit. What's the point, right? There's so much going on. You know, and I, I brought up this little blank piece of paper because what do we call this little space here on the, on the right side of the red line? We call it margin, right? Margin. And we know from research, right, that most people have no margin in their life, right? And what does a margin do? This space is for where you just fill it up with all the stuff that you're writing down, all the notes that you need. But what's the margin for? It's for when you run out of room, you can kind of flow over into the margin and it's still okay, right? Still have that little extra space. But what happens when you don't have any margin in your life? When you flow over, it's a volcanic eruption, right? It's a catastrophe in your home, right? It's not good, right? It's not good. And it's flowing over into the fact that, you know, we know that a huge number, I think it's 85% of all illness is stress-related. Wow. You know, so could it be that you need to unplug because you want to create some space in right. your life? You need some margin, and if you unplug, you'll do that. For example, I kind of fell into a bad habit of looking at Instagram before I went to bed at night. And, you know, I'd be like, I'm just going to be like 10 minutes on Instagram, 15. I'm going to put my timer on, shut that timer off, keep scrolling <gasps> an hour later, right? Where did that time go? Guess what? Do I feel like getting up for 6.30 prayer in the morning? <laughs> No, no, I don't feel like it because had I just kind of went to bed, right. said my prayers, right, and let myself just fall asleep, I would have had an extra hour of sleep. But, you know, it's amazing how when you get on social media, I don't need to tell anybody here what I'm talking about, okay? Or it could be flipping the channels at night. You're just looking for something, and you're just flipping, 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 looking, right? Maybe you're hooked on romance novels you know and you're up all hours of the night reading not that it's bad to read right or watch tv or go on social media but in this month we're saying god 
we want to unplug because we're going to create some space. We're going to create a vacuum and see if maybe God wants to fill it with something. Because if our life is so full that it's over, over the margin and God's trying to get in, trying to get our attention, what are we going to do? Right? You know, we're going to have big apologies. Sorry, God. Sorry, God. I'm going to do better. But our chances of doing better when we try and do it alone are not that great. And that's why as a body, when we come together, we have this corporate anointing, right? This corporate grace to really create this space for God to speak to our hearts this month. Yay, God. Another reason why you might want to do this is, and this, you know, let's just, here we go. You might, you know, perhaps you're feeling, I want to say this with all respect, okay? Because I've been there. Maybe you're just feeling really just tired and burnt out and you're just desperate. You know, like you've tried, you've tried everything. You feel like you've tried everything to make a change in your life. You know things aren't the way that you want them to be. You know, you're not happy, you don't have peace, you're fighting with your family members, you know, you just, you've tried everything. You know, I'm, I'm offering this to you as a, as a gift from, from the Lord through pastors, right? A, you know, this opportunity to try this, to unplug for the month and allow the Lord to minister to your heart through this time. If you're feeling that way, if you're feeling, you know, at the end of your rope, you're tired, you're, you just have tried everything, we want to stand with you. We cannot say this enough to you, but please, please come to the altar for prayer. Miracles happen every week at this altar, okay? Miracles happen. People's lives are changed. Deliverance happens at the altar. It happens all the time, and this could be you tonight. We want you to come for prayer. And, and, the la and there's many reasons to unplug, but the last one is because pastors asked us to do this, right? They've, they're not mandating this, but they're asking or inviting us into this. And we believe that they're the head of the host, of the household, right? They're the head, and we believe that they're discerning the will of God for us, correct? That's why you're here. That's why you're willing to submit yourself and sit in those seats, right, and be held accountable, right, by the message that goes out every week. Right now, the Lord is giving a message to you, and you're being held accountable to this message. You're, you're choosing to be here. So we trust the word that comes through them, and they've asked us to engage and to participate. That's definitely not me, but <laughs> hallelujah, Lord, you can have your way anyway. Okay, so yay, God. Okay, just unplug there. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, what if you just substituted your plugged in time for just rest? How about that? You just substitute that plugged in time for time with your spouse or your family. You know, you gave them that 15 minutes, or, or what if you gave it to God, right? And you just made that small substitution over the next 30 days. We challenge you and guarantee that your life will be enriched by doing this. Now, let's look at some reasons why you might not want to unplug. So there are some reasons why you might not want to. We're just going to look at, you know, a, a three of them, Okay. Number one, maybe you're just so content with how things are going. Life is just great for you. Maybe things are going well. You don't feel like you have any problems or issues or concerns. Hats off to you. Congratulations. We really applaud you. Okay? <laughs> truly, truly, truly. Because if that's the case, then that's evidence that you have a very healthy belief system and it's working for you. If that's your case, and that's what we want, this is the goal, right? This is why we do things like Unplugged, because we want to be in that place where we feel like life is good. Yeah. All the time, life is good, and we feel content. We, that's, what we're, that's the aim. That's what we're going for. So if that's you, you know your beliefs affect your thoughts, right, which affect your emotions, which affect your decisions, which affect your actions, your habits, 
over time, your character, ultimately your destiny. There is a link to what you believe and what the outcome is. So if life is good for you, seriously, we want to talk to you. We want to know what you're doing, okay, how you got that down, because that's the way it's supposed to work. But we know from research, we know that, you know, from polls that are taking, that really about two-thirds of North Americans feel unhappy. They would report that they're unhappy. So 66% of people on a poll say that they're unhappy. That's, that seems like a lot, but I bet you the number is actually higher. Because nobody wants to admit it, really, that they're unhappy. So it's hard to know. But I would say it's probably higher that, that the majority of people, safe to say, feel unhappy. Another reason to, uh, where you might, why you might not want to unplug, and the next two reasons are fairly important, serious things that you want to address. Because they're potentially toxic to your life. Okay, but these two reasons um, are maybe you don't want to grow closer to God. Maybe you just feel like, for whatever reason, you just, you just don't want to. You just don't want to. You're not really happy with where things are at, but you just don't want to. You don't want to try. You don't want to put yourself out there. You're just not ready. That's okay. We don't want you to stay that way, but we do want to honor you by acknowledging that those are very real feelings, right? right. right? And often there's a root, right. right? Because God is so good, right? And you know that. <coughs> if you don't know it personally, you've heard stories, right? right? You've heard these testimonies that are being shared that God is so good. You know some of the Bible promises, right? So you know there's more, but you just don't want to try. So if that's you, if that's you, where you feel disappointed with God, you know, or angry with God, you know, or maybe you wouldn't say God. Maybe you would blame it on your pastors, you know, or blame it on a leader or blame it on somebody that you go to church with, right? And I, I mean that respectfully because... Right. This is real, right? You know, and, and so maybe you just feel like, ah, oh, I was just burned once, you know, like, this is good. I come, I hear the message, I'm good. I don't bother anybody. I don't create any problems. I give my tithe and offerings. I have a cup of coffee and I'm gone, right? And it's safe. Right. And it's right. safe, right? And that's real. And we want to be respectful about with that, right? Because, because we do go through things, right, where we do get hurt, we get burned by things that happen, and it's painful and difficult sometimes. And so when we ask you to jump in the river, you know, it's so great in the river, and you're thinking, no, thank you. I did that once, and it didn't work out for me. People laughed at me, or nothing happened, right? So I'm not doing that again, thank you very much. Hmm. If you were me right now, what would you tell everybody here if you heard that as someone's reason for why they didn't want to try again? What would you say to a friend that said they're tired or they're disappointed? You're stronger than that. So you would encourage them, right? You would encourage them to say, basically, go for it, right? Try again, right? Don't quit. Try again. And we know in Philippians, I love this verse where God says to us, forgetting what lies behind, right? He gives us permission to let it go. He doesn't need us to be responsible by hanging on to the past, He's actually saying the responsible thing is to just let it go and try again and give God an opportunity to prove himself to you. Not that he needs to because God is good. But if you have something in your belief system that to the contrary, 
Maybe your life showed you that, you know, there's no such thing as a loving father. You know, then God is not happy that you have that belief, right? Because he loves you so much. He truly, truly loves you so much that he, he will not rest by allowing you to continue to believe that. He just won't rest. He is, he is a relentless pursuer. He is a relentless pursuer. He is a relentless pursuer of our hearts. Just like you would be. You know, as I look around the room at the men that are here, and I know many of you, you know, and I think if I was in trouble, I know that you would come to the rescue. I know that you would. I know that you would. And you being mere mortals, okay, would do what you could do to try and make the situation right, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? You would want to make it right. You would do what was in your power to help to make it right. Where do you think that came from? Come on, so good. See, we are made in the image of God. We just reflect him. We didn't come up with that, right? Braveheart, that movie, right? You know, that's, that, that came from God, right? That creativity, you know, the idea of fighting for what is right, you know, the bravery and courage that it takes to sacrifice your life, right? That, that's from God. That inspiration is, is, is divine. Hallelujah. So God, he wants to restore your heart. And, and we want you to come forward tonight for prayer. Or if it's not tonight, you know, don't leave it long, right? But come forward. Because we want you to experience the joy of unplugging. It might seem like a hard thing, but it's going to be beautiful. And we want you to experience it. So tonight's about removing obstructions that would prevent you from jumping into the river of what we're doing as a body. Because let's just cast a vision. The vision is us united okay, as a body, as a family of people that have separated themselves for a month from the cultural pleasures and the worldly pleasures, right, separated and consecrated ourselves to God. That sounds really, you know, um, maybe very spiritual, but in simple terms, it's like we are linking arms together and saying we're going to step back from the world and give a chance by creating a space for God to move in and take over and to provide direction and healing and comfort. Yay, God. And then maybe this is just a third thing. And again, maybe you don't want to try because, you know, you've tried kind of things before and they haven't worked out for you. You've kind of done, you know, like a diet program or you tried, the, you know, to work out or something. You've tried like 21 days to change the way you think or, you know, you've, you've tried things before and you think, oh, I, I just am not going to set myself up for failure. I'm not doing it, Right. That's a fear, right? Yeah. You are making a decision based in fear. Even if it's even if it's like you know, real. Like even if it feels hard to choose otherwise, just so you know, okay? Just shining a little flashlight. <laughs> because we want to be lead we are leaders. We don't want to be leaders. We are leaders, okay? You come to this house, you are a leader right? Leaders lead, right? And leaders do not make decisions based out of fear, right? Right? You're not going to not go somewhere because you're afraid you're going to get into a car accident, right? That's not a reason not to go somewhere. Do you see what I'm saying? That's a fear decision. You're not going to not invest in something because you're afraid you're going to lose all your money. That's a fear decision, right? That's not how we live our lives here at Victory or as Christians, right? As disciples of God, right? God was never afraid to give his son. Jesus didn't fear the cross. He wasn't loving it. He asked if it could be, you know, pass on, but, uh, you know, the father knew better. So he said, no. So maybe this is you, 
where you just feel like, oh, I, I'm just going to, you know, even if you make a joke about it and laugh about it, oh, I'm just going to start that thing, and, you know, five days from now, I won't be doing it anyways, okay? Okay, so, so what? So what? So what if you started and you end up not finishing? So what? There's no condemnation, right? But if you don't try, yeah. right, you're never going to experience the blessing that's contained in what we're doing as a house. So let's shoot for the stars, and we might get the moon, which would still be wonderful, or however that goes, okay? So, so even if we, it, it, let's just try, okay? And I can't make you try by saying, let's just try. You know, I promise you it's going to be good. I wish that I could do that. Yeah. But what we know, because we know about belief systems here, we know that if you have an unhealthy belief that says, I fail at these things, okay, right? I don't succeed, however you want to say it, if you want to soften the language, you know. <laughs> I don't succeed or I fail at these things. I'm just going to ask you a question. If it's true that you fail at things, what does that say about you? I am blank. How would you fill it in? I am a failure. Shoot. <laughs> right? Not true, but real to you. Yes. Okay? Not true to God, not true to his word, right, who's given you victory in all things. All things are possible for he who believes, right? On and on it goes, the scriptures, about how much triumph and victory is in our life right but if we have a belief system to the contrary it's not going to give us results so again come to the altar come to the altar we want to pray with you through these things through disappointment through fear through um, feelings of unworthiness or feelings of failure we, we want to pray with you and it's not us right as we lay hands on you and as the Lord ministers to you, it's God himself, right, speaking through man. It wouldn't be the first time he's done it, right? The Bible is full of prophetic word, right, which was God speaking through man. Yay, God. So this is now a point of decision here. Because, you know, maybe you've already decided what you're going to do for Unplugged. You're one of those folks that are ahead of the game, and, you know, you've already, I haven't, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decide with you, to always just be real, okay? I quite haven't gotten around to exactly what am I going to do. I just today made sure we didn't go on social media. But anyways, so I don't know. I had asked the Holy Spirit too. And, and we're just going to say, Lord, I, I want to do this, Okay. Okay, I'm not going to worry about whether I'm like, you know, goody two shoes and doing it perfect, whatever that is, no such thing, okay? I want to do something, God. Yeah. I want to do something, God. I, I want to do something. I know there's something that I can do. And you know what? God will take your little something, okay, and he'll turn it into something beautiful. God, he doesn't mind little things, like a little grain of, little grain, little mustard seed, right? There's so much faith. In a little grain of mustard seed, it could move a mountain, right? So let's just ask the Lord, and no pressure here, okay? But let's just, let's just let the Lord decide, okay? Or maybe if you don't want him to decide for you, let's let him just influence us. How about we say that, okay? And let's just ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, do you want me to unplug? So, you know, some of you might have heard like a big yes on the inside, you know, or maybe you got a picture of something. Maybe you saw a plug being pulled out of a wall, you know, or, or birds fr flying, you know, whatever your image is that God used to show you, right? Or maybe for some of you, you just have a, a sense of peace, like, yeah, this feels good. This feels right. And then yield to that, right? Don't ignore that. Don't stuff it. Don't
don't pretend it's indigestion, right? Let's just acknowledge that God is speaking to his kids, right? He promises that, that his sheep know his voice. And if you feel like you don't hear from God, that's okay too. But you know what? Come to the altar because we want to tell you the four keys to hearing God's voice really, really simple and direct you to a really great resource around learning how to train your ear, just like we all had to, to hear from God. We're not better and there's no one better than anyone here, but we are all learning, right? And some of us are more into learning and others are going to get there into learning, okay? So, so if you decided yes, okay, let's just take a second and say, Holy Spirit, what should I do? Hmm. Yeah, God is good. So, whatever that is, I want you to write it down. I want you to just write that down. And I don't want you to despise small beginnings. If it's a small little thing, I don't want you to condemn yourself and feel like, oh, this is a little thing. What difference is that going to make? But just write it down and determine, maybe even write it into your day timer or write it on your hand or put a reminder in your phone. But just do that now. This is a, a coaching principle, right? That you take your intention and you actually put it somewhere where it's before you and you're not going to forget it. Because otherwise you're going to be tempted to plug in if we don't have something that says, whoa. Okay. Now, I want you to do this next thing, okay? I want you to think about what you will look like or be like or feel like after 30 days. What's your hope for this season, for 30 days? Just close your eyes, Holy Spirit. What will I be like in 30 days? Don't be afraid to hope. God can do anything. That's your goal. What you see or feel is what you're working towards. And it's prophetic. God has given you a prophetic picture or a prophetic word about what he intends to do. That's what God wants to do for you in 30 days of allowing yourself to unplug. And maybe when he said what to unplug from, if you're like me, he also said, this is what I want you to do too, by the way. Okay, I want you to unplug here and I want you to do more of that. And in 30 days, I'm, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be different. You might not see it, but I know it's going to be here. And you will see it because out of the abundance of the heart and mouth speaks, you're going you're gonna to see it. So let's just close in prayer and, and just, you know, thank God for just being God. Father, we, we thank you, Lord God, for you being you, God. Thank you that you love us, Lord God. You love us with your whole heart, Lord, not just a part of your heart, not just one little portion that you reserve the rest of your heart for someone else or something else, Lord God, but you love us with everything that's in you, Lord God, all of you, Lord. And I just release the love of God over everyone tonight. Father, I thank you for your love and the outpouring of your love. And Lord God, where there's been any trauma for people, Lord, where they've been hurt or traumatized or are just dis disappointed, Lord, with life, Father, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would touch them, Lord God, and bring healing. Just bring healing to those places, Lord God. Revive their hearts, Lord, to believe, to, to trust you, Lord God, to trust again, Lord, to try again, God. 
thank you, Father. We just leave this prayer with you, Lord, knowing that you say, Lord, as we come together in faith, Lord, ask what you will and it will be done for us, God. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.